Welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan. I'm here in the Philippines. Today I was working on a. I put a made a sheath for the the cleaver drop, the heavy cleaver drop point. And uh, had a couple pieces of PVC left. I needed a new sheath for my uh, my custom bolo parang. Absolutely beautiful knife. What a, I think it's a 14 inch blade in my shirt. No, about a 12, about a 12 inch edge, 12 and a half inch edge on the blade. But it's absolutely, this is the best shape I've ever found for a, a bolo or a prang or a, a utility knife, whatever you want to call it. Just that little curve in the blade puts all the energy right here to the the meat of the the edge. And this one has a nice thin, thinner handle on it. I've got another one with a much wider handle, which also works very nice. It's another uh, quarter pound heavier than this one. This one I've ground down over the years. I, I made this, I uh, had this made in 2004 and it was a quarter inch thick when I started with it now it's not and it was a little bit wider and now it's not and it had guava handles on it slabs which kind of worked their way loose I put some of the fiber fix uh, epoxy tape on it uh, probably 15 years ago and it's lasted absolutely beautiful. It's got one little nick where I bumped it with the grinder, but other than that, it's absolutely perfect. It's got a nice texture to it, just enough so it doesn't slip out of your hand. Uh, so today I made a sheath for it. Again, out of PVC, nothing fancy. I put the two holes in the end again, again, just in case it needs to be tied to a pack or something like that. And on this end here, it needs to have a dangler tied for it. I made a temporary dangler. Put a, a Carex bend knot on the end of it, so it, it, it's perfect. If I had a motorcycle, it's just big enough for the to go over the handlebars, so you can have it hanging on your handlebars when you're up in the mountains and stuff. You always need a knife wherever you go here, uh, in case you run into a snake or a big lizard or something like that, or a, a tree across the road, something like that. Uh, I carry it for the two-legged snakes, is what I carry it for. Uh, you go up the one road. There's a in fact, we've got two roads that go up in the mountains here, and there's a two-legged snake on both roads. Absolute disappointment of humanity. Um, turned out nice, though. It's real faded. This has been sitting out in the sun for at least four or five years. I was using it for different things. Uh, but it, it heated up okay. Uh, I made this one a little different. This time I heated the whole thing up, and I just put the knife in it. And press it down around the, the handle and stuff and let it cool then I heated up the tip and squash that down tight till it cooled down I heat up this end and then squash that down flat and then drilled four holes in it I'm finished this one could be sanded down and painted real easy if you wanted to um, I like this color or any color other than black really in the woods uh, or brown or green, I don't, any of those colors I don't want, but this is a good color because uh, when you set your knife down somewhere you can find it again, and you wouldn't believe how stuff blends into the undergrowth and, and the dead stuff in a in a jungle area. Uh, I've, I've set my actual knife down before and uh, it's taken hours to find it sometimes. One time I was chopping on something and I got so tired I went hit something, the knife went flying, and uh, flew flew about 10 feet. But I thought it went farther, so I was looking farther away, and then I, then I looked everywhere between there and, and where I stood at. I finally found it 8 or 10 feet away from where I was standing, but it, it took me about an hour to find it. Again, because it's dark colored, and it fits right in with the the ground, you know, so. And, and actually, when I threw it, it went down underneath the, the, the leaves and stuff a little bit, too, so. But this is a fabulous knife here, guys. I'd recommend this style to anybody. 
Uh, the shape of this right here is almost exactly the same shape as a Schrade Parang. They're, they're Schrade's big Parang. It's almost identical except for the Schrade handle. It's kind of a plastic handle with finger grips in it. Uh, it's real thin. If you're a smaller guy or something, it'd be, it'd be great for you maybe. I don't know, but for me it's too small. Um, this one has a, has a vinegar patina on it. Lasting very nicely. This is my main knife here that I use for everything. And I had it had a sheath cut before, just a real simple sheath. This is the only piece of plastic I had at the time that wasn't being used. And the knife just goes, it's, it's a little too short for the for the blade even. And I just put a string on it. I use that, I use that for what two years now, two and a half years. But I found another piece of pipe, so I thought I'd make another sheath, and it turned out fantastic. Took about, oh, maybe a total of maybe 20 minutes total making it. Longest part was cutting it off and cutting the the top part in half, so you just have one piece in the back. Took about four or five minutes to heat it up because it's a big, long piece. It says this is made in the Philippines. UPVC. The other PVC we had was CPVC, which I think was made in China. This stuff actually heated up nice, and I was able to heat up different spots, different times, where usually you, you heat up a second time and the, the CPVC cracks. But I, I really like it, and it turned out nice. So, there's my new... Custom Parang, Bolo Parang Sheath. Not fancy guys, but it sure is nice. So I guess that's all I have. Hashtag 22 a day no more. Go out and have some fun. Watch your six really close. Be extra careful when you're out and about. And uh, just be safe guys. Thanks for watching.